right, let's head over to the Azure portal and go ahead and click the plus sign here and we'll create a new Cosmos DB database. So we'll go to databases and then scroll down and Cosmos DB, that's the one we want. Click create and then we'll give it a name. I'm going to call mine uh, React Cosmos DB and I've already created one so it's going to tell me this name's already taken. We'll ignore that for a second. And then we need to choose an API. Now, Cosmos DB is one of the first databases that I've ever seen that has multiple APIs. Uh, so you can use the SQL API, which they call Document DB, uh, MongoDB, which is the one we're going to use because it's very familiar, uh, Gremlin, and then a, a key value store. So we'll choose MongoDB for now. Then we can create a new resource group. This really can be anything. It doesn't matter. We'll just call it uh, Burks React stuff, uh, which also already exists. So I can really just use existing here, Burks React stuff. And then we'll select the default location, pin to dashboard, click create. I'm not going to click create because I've already created it. You can see it's over here uh, on my dashboard right here. So once we got that done, we need to install some dependencies for our application to be able to connect to the database. All right, the first thing we're going to do is install npm install MongoDB and save that. MongoDB is the npm uh, package for connecting to MongoDB. So we're going to need that to connect to Cosmos DB because that's the API we're using. So it just reuses that same Mongo package. And then I also want us to install something called Mongoose, which is an API that sits on top of Mongo and makes it a whole lot easier to work with Mongo databases. Uh, and this also is going to apply to Cosmos DB. So we're just going to use this mongoose package to make it very nice and easy for us as developers. Okay, with our packages installed, let's head over to Visual Studio Code and get cracking on this database connection. Now we're going to need to define our database connection. So let's do that first. I'm going to create a new file called Mongo. And inside of this file, I'm going to uh, bring in mongoose uh, and require that in from the mongoose package. Um, another thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and override Mongoose's default promise API and replace that with the global promise API. The reason for this is that Mongoose originally had its own implementation of promises, but now that they're part of the JavaScript runtime, we want to use the ones that are built into Node, so that's what we'll do. Uh, and now I want to create something called an environment variable. And inside of that, we're going to have a DB name, uh, we're going to have a key, and we're going to have a port. OK, we'll put that to zero for now. And this is all of our connection specific information, stuff we don't want anybody to see. And I'm putting this in an environment variable so that we can hide it later. And I'll show you how to do that. Now, we need to fill in these properties. So let's go back to the Azure portal, and I'll show you where you can find them. If you go into your Cosmos DB database, scroll down to connection string here, click. And you can see we've got the host here. The database name is just the first part of this, React Cosmos DB. So we can put that in here. OK, and then the key is this password right here. And we can copy this right here with that button. That'll work. And then just paste this in. Again, these are private things. We don't want anybody to see. And same with the port. Our port's 10255. Copy that in as well. OK, now let's define the connection string. And I'm just going to copy and paste that in, and then we'll talk about it. All right, here's our connection string. Let's go ahead and collapse this. So we have more real estate here. Uh, and it looks like this, mongodb colon slash slash comes like HTTP, right? And then the database name colon and then the password at the database name fully qualified documents.azure.com with another uh, colon here at the end and the port and then SSL is true. Now, if you ever get confused, think I'm never going to remember that, don't worry, you don't have to. Back here in the portal, it's just right here. I'm just substituting out these things, the variables, so I can switch them out. OK, let's define a function that will uh, enable us to connect. And we'll just call it connect. And then inside of that, we'll just return mongoose and then say connect. Uh, there we go. And then we'll provide the Mongo URI. And then we're going to provide some options here. And we're going to say use Mongo client is true, because we want it to use the MongoDB package that we pulled in to connect to Mongo. And that's what it will do if we provide this here instead of the one that Mongoose comes with. And then let's just export this stuff back out. So module export equals, and then we have a connect function, and we have uh, the Mongoose object, which we're going to use later on. And now we want to revisit this environment variable here. Now, remember I said we want to keep this stuff private. We don't want anybody to be able to see it. And it's not very private right here, is it? No, it's not. So let's fix this. I'm going to cut this out here, and then I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to put it, actually, let's start with a new folder and call it environment. 
And then inside of that, let's do a new file called environment, okay? Now, we could have environment-prod, environment-qa, environment-dev, whatever. But for our purposes, we're just going to have one file that contains our connection information. And then we'll just module.exports equals env. Okay, now that we've split that out, we need to include it back in. So let's just come in and say um, up here at the top, uh, const env equals require, and then environment, environment's hard to spell, environment, okay. So now we're pulling that file in from over here. Same exact uh, variable, same structure, just being pulled in from a separate file. And now what we can do is we can, in our git ignore, if we come down here, we can say we've got secret stuff that we want to ignore. So we can just say environment slash environment.js. And what the net effect of this is, we will not check this file into source control. So our secret key, all the confidential information can end up in GitHub where other people could see it. This is just one method of handling sensitive information. Cool, our connection is all set. What we need to do now is create a file which will model for Mongoose what a hero object looks like in our database, a hero model. So let's do that. So I'll create a new file and let's just save it. We'll call it hero model.js and drop it right in the server folder. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this in so you don't have to watch me type all this. Uh, but we're bringing in Mongoose again. We're bringing in schema, which comes off the Mongoose uh, object, which we brought in here. And then we're defining a new hero schema. It's a new schema. And these are just the fields that are in our schema. We have an ID, which is a type number. It's required and it's unique. And we have a name and a saying. So really we're defining our database table here. This is where we define the new model for Mongoose here. And then we just export it back out. And now we're ready to connect to the database and read data, create data, update, delete, all of that stuff. And that's what we'll do in the next episode. I'll see you then.